all right what's going on there folks welcome back here on this sunday night this is the earth master here on this end and um well january 14th 2024 about 10 30 p.m here california time uh latest activity looks like a 1.8 up into the alaska area we did see uh some deep movement out here across the western pacific uh in the last couple hours we'll get to that here in just a second uh, just a real quick recap of what's going on up there in Iceland. Uh, second fissure uh, opened up uh, earlier today just to the north, literally just to the north here of Grindavik. And this picture from the RUV.is news station here uh, in Iceland showing that uh, uh, flow of lava uh, taking a turn towards the south there into directly into the town of Grindavik. Uh, they're still working to prevent uh, a lot of the flow there, the backflow, the one that's um, a little bit bigger and more north of this area, trying to get it uh, uh, moving around uh, along a berm, so to speak, and directed away from town. So uh, things are still, uh, you know, they're still active. I was just looking at the uh, live stream here, still seeing some fountains of lava here across the fissure area looks like it's died down uh you know a lot since um the eruption began uh, we're coming up on uh not quite 24 hours but uh goodness there was a lot of eruptive activity here uh when this thing did kick up so things are slowing down but not entirely um on this image here i'm not really seeing the exact location of where Grindavik is, um, I'm guessing it's somewhere down here, uh, but obviously um, it's it's definitely uh, almost like the worst case scenario in terms of where this uh, that secondary fissure opened up uh, there at the north end of Grindavik. Uh, so continue to watch it. Earthquake activity here in the last 12 hours uh, has dropped down considerably here because uh well I, this time last night yeah maybe not this time last night but getting close to it uh we we're looking at hundreds of earthquakes popping up here all across the area and of course that was a uh, an obvious sign there of some uh, magma moving around the subsurface area and ultimately finding its way uh into the area north of Grindavik. uh earthquake activity 139 earthquakes in the last 12 hours, but still most of the movement here confined to where the magma intrusion is taking place here, uh, Grindavik area northward, uh, and quite a bit down south here as well. Uh, I'm uncertain, haven't heard any new news in terms of if any fissure activity has opened up as uh, far as a third opening, uh, but we're still seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity down here south of the Grindavik region. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. And, uh, uh, really no new update here from the Icelandic Med Office. They did mention here about that uh, um, secondary uh, fracture, so to speak, uh, where it has entered the town, uh, the north end of the town. Uh, here is the first one that popped up there uh, early this morning, uh, local time there in Iceland. Uh, can't really see Grindavik here. It would be south. And uh, then we would see another fissure line open up. This is a berm area, I believe, <coughs> where they were trying to uh, prevent any uh, lava fields or lava flow from heading down this area. But uh, the eruptive activity uh, just happened to hit right at that berm region. And, uh, you know, pretty much a worst case scenario. There was an overflight last night before the... Uh, uh, before the second uh, fissure opened up, again, as we see in this one, this was the secondary one flowing into the town. It's obviously going to find the, the path out to the sea, uh, and it looks like maybe potentially a direct shot here. Um, but again, uh, we'll know more once we get uh, a little bit more information from the uh, Icelandic Met Office, but things are still active, as we can see here in the, uh, the live stream here. Looks like they're toning down, but uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Um, let me see here if these guys mentioned anything else. Uh, you know, they're basically stating that the eruption is likely to isolate, 
isolate itself to a few places and eventually to only one, uh, meaning that we're not going to see that broad uh, scale um, flow, that large volume of uh, uh, lava coming out. Uh, it kind of actually kind of looks like it's already doing that right now, but uh, still too early to say. Uh, and even these guys are stating uh, too early to say how fast it will continue to decline. I was just looking at the um, the graphs here. These are the uh, GPS displacements here. Um, uh, English is good. Thank you. Let's see here. And uh, certain graphs uh, have dropped uh, around, uh, you know, the region, but we haven't really seen a considerable drop in terms of, you know, what we would see following a uh, uh, an eruption here. This is the Savart Singhi area. Notice, um, and I'm pretty certain this goes up to, oh dang it, that's too big, that it goes up to today. Uh, we haven't really seen a tremendous drop, and this is kind of where the the magma reservoir is, the Savart Singhi area. Uh, the dike area, the magma intrusion zone is underneath Grindavik. And that area has seen, um, here's a green to Vic one. Let's see, this is a four hour run. Uh, it's hard to say uh, if, we, if we've seen uh, any type of decline here in terms of the inflation there across that uh, area. A few are showing that little drop here. This up is indicative of the um, inflation, the up uh, level here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. It's a little on the, uh, there we go. Uh, so a few stations have shown that here, that we're seeing a little bit of a deflation event going on. But uh, the main areas of Art Singhi area, uh, really no noticeable uh, downturn in terms of the uh, activity across this region. Yes. So there is a little bit of release, relief of pressure from the area below. But uh Uncertain though on if this is enough to, uh, you know, to taper things off here for a while. There was definitely a lot of large-scale activity, earthquake activity taking place here regionally um, last night. Let's see if I see how far I can go back on this. Twenty-four hours. That brings up a few of them. Um, if we could go back thirty-six hours or so, which I don't think we can on this map we'd see uh, a, a lot more earthquake activity. I think we're getting close to almost a thousand earthquakes there uh, in the total uh, accumulation area around this region of uh, Iceland. But uh, 541, you can see all that uh, movement kicking up there uh, prior and during the eruption activity. And it's still continuing uh, to this hour, but not as, as intense. There was just a lot going on out here across these rift zones. Um, and south here along Iceland as well. I, I feel that allowed a lot more, uh, maybe a further push of magma into the area. And because uh, this was just not localized to this area, the earthquake activity was over a wide region here. Uh, so we'll continue to watch it, right? That's all we can do right now. And uh, hopefully things will taper down. Uh, it looks like they have lowered the threat level here to the uh, orange. It was uh, in the red, um, so maybe they're thinking that things are mellowing out, uh, which hopefully is the case. We'll get uh, you know an update here hopefully soon from the uh, Icelandic Met Office uh, because their latest one was put out earlier today, and uh, they just mentioned about uh, that second uh, fissure opening up and uh, the existing faults and more fractures were. Pro uh, Recent fractures were reactivated and likely new fractures formed within the town of uh, Greenvik itself. So we'll continue to keep an eye on it, folks. Uh, earthquake activity out here. Getting to these deep... Oh, what do we got up here? Into the uh, Pacific Northwest, a little earthquake, 2.7. That's coming up on about an hour or so ago. Uh, but just coming in there to the USGS map. Outside of Seattle a little bit. Um... 27 kilometers deep it's somewhat deep there into the area of course cascadia subduction zone sits right offshore here and extends north and south across the area um the deeper quakes here is a little on the interesting side because all three of these up and down this plate boundary here uh, one north of japan one south of japan here are 
uh, in the four range, but uh, goodness, three to 400 kilometers, almost 500 kilometers for this one below the surface there uh, for this earthquake into the Izu Trench. So strain is building out here on a broad scale across that area. Uh, on the Earthquake 3D globe here, you can see it as well. Not a whole lot of surface adjustment yet, but I would watch this area pretty closely for some movement. A deeper, uh, you know, I can... Maybe one one deep earthquake may not be enough strain out here, but we're looking at uh, you know a handful of deep earthquakes uh, underneath this area into the subduction zone. So watch this area along the Pacific Plate. Uh, five pointer looks like is that a five pointer? A couple earthquakes there into the Tonga area. Relatively shallow movement. Let's see what we got here. Five pointer. Uh, this is the most recent quake. We did see uh, some deeper earthquake activity here earlier this morning much earlier that's straining the areas upstream uh with that shallow earthquake coming in following the deeper movement here sometimes it happens within an hour sometimes it takes a uh, you know a few hours but uh eventually we'll see that uh relation between the deeper earthquakes and the subsequent shallower uh, activity upstream in the subduction zones uh new zealand i'm not seeing anything on the usgs map but they did have some activity a 4.2 Earthquake, uh, I believe that was from early this morning. So let me see what we got here for the uh, GeoNet servers. Um, going to run over to the uh, New Zealand Quakes.com site and look at what they have here. <clears throat> Looks like they were reporting a 4.4 earthquake. Uh, that's going to be the strongest quake down. Uh, let's see, strongest quake is going to be in this right here. Uh, looks like about 100 kilometers deep. The most recent quake going to be in the green pin mark uh, down here across the South Island area. And that looks like it's going to be a 2.7. Uh, so a little bit of activity stirring up down there in New Zealand today. Um, not anything of concern. Let me take a look at these graphs here on this model. There was a four-pointer there two days ago, South Island, but uh, again, that was two out uh, two days ago. Um, let's check out the earthquake drum, see if anything spectacular is going on. There's some of that activity, uh, that four-pointer that um, was North Island area or just north of there. Uh, for the most part, though, things I'm not really seeing any swarming, no major earthquake activity. Uh, there's that movement four-pointer. Uh, well south here of the South, south Island region. Just barely being picked up on this station here called the Paps. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Uh, New Zealand is a place I would love to visit one of these days. And who knows, that may happen. All right, uh, moving on past here. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii. Another region waiting for some volcano activity, right? A little bit different uh, dynamics though at work here compared to uh, up in Ice, uh, Iceland. Uh, the Kilauea volcano, a couple earthquakes here <clears throat> throughout the last 24 hours or so. <clears throat> i got to keep my voice going, right? Uh, it's just, I don't know. It's it's the uh, weather. Who knows what it is? Something in the air. couple twos. I don't think we've seen any major changes going on, but I will uh, double check the tilt meter out here across the Big Island and see if anything is going on here across the area. Uh, the volcano, Kilauea, is still sitting at a yellow. Uh, which means uh, showing some signs of uh, increased activity, unrest. Tilt meter looks like we're uh, continuing the downward trend. Notice that this morning. Oops, I didn't mean to close that out. Um, uncertain, though, on if we're just going to continue to go down. Probably the more realistic um, option here in terms of the forecast for this activity is that we're going to see a similar to period, similar period as to what we've seen here back around the uh, the 6th or so of January. A little decline for a couple days, and then it's going to go right back up. It's been the trend this way for uh, a couple months now. Each, infl each inflation event larger than the previous one. And, of course, this is the highest level of inflation there at the summit uh, since the 2018 eruption. So we know things are filling up below the surface. Uh, just a matter of time here before we see uh, eruptive activity. Uh, this definitely looks like some magma movement here stirring up earlier this morning. Uh, but notice here in the last few hours, uh, afternoon and evening, things have kind of calmed down here. Not a whole lot of activity. Uh, but we will see earthquake activity 
or really ramp up prior to any fisher activity opening up. All right, uh, what else we got covering uh, the California area here where it's, uh, there's not a whole lot going on here in California right now. Just uh, a handful of smaller quakes. I don't think we got anything above 2.5. Well, take that back. We did have a 2.7 Mariposa area. Uh, that's here across the uh, extreme western edge of the Sierra Nevada mountains and the eastern edge here of the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, 22 kilometers deep, also at a 2.7 further down south. Uh, but aside from that, uh, just generally microquake activity here today. Uh, nothing going on up in Yellowstone, but it is the weekend, so they will not show activity unless it's above a certain level, um, mostly 2.5 and above. Uh, this activity up here, hard to say if it's earthquake activity. It kind of looks like it, and in a way, it kind of doesn't. Uh, I'm really not seeing that show up anywhere as uh, far as any other seismograph stations. Uh, so I don't know what that is, but it doesn't look like it's, um, you know, earthquake activity, some type of outside interference, uh, kicking up there. Now earthquake activity locally. Yes, we did see a couple spikes here across the, um, the area of Maple Creek. Uh, maybe one earthquake over here around the borehole B2, uh, B208 there as well. Uh, but far as any, um, major swarming going on it doesn't look like it just a handful of smaller quakes that may show up on tuesday monday of course being the holiday uh, so we'll have to wait for tuesday for them to fill in uh, any earthquakes that uh, were uh, that did happen out here uh trimmer map let me check out the trimmer see what's going on there uh, we got only wow <laughs> only 11 epicenters of trimmer up here um, around the Tacoma and Olympia area. This is underneath this area, about 35, 45 kilometers or so into the subduction zone of the Cascadia there, which continues to build up, you guessed it, uh, you know, pressure and, uh, momentum, so to speak for the next big mega quake out here along the Cascadia. It's, it's in the future. That is, uh, something we can't stop. The best thing we could do is be prepared about it. Be prepared for it, uh, you know, be knowledgeable about it, what it's, uh, what the damage potential can, uh, can be. And it's quite, it's great. That's for sure. It can definitely, uh, create a lot of havoc out there. So hopefully, uh, everyone will be ready for that. Uh, far as the rest of the model here, smaller earthquakes down into the South America region, uh, these are actually some deep ones here. Uh, the first one, 4.7, fairly deep. Uh, quite a few hours later, we get a 5.0 upstream, but still deep as well. Uh, so watch this region pretty closely, this bend area. They can see quite a bit of larger activity uh, in that zone. Uh, Texas still seeing some activity. What we got over here? 2.6 out uh, around the Turkey area. Aside from that, uh, we'll just continue to watch things. All the seismograph stations here look pretty calm, fairly quiet. The Iceland station is offline for now. Um, so we'll drop that off and check on it later, see if we can re-add it. Uh, that way we have all the stations covered here. Yellowstone, Lake Yellowstone there on the bottom. All right, uh, space weather activity here from solarham.net. Things are mellow. They're mellowing out. Um... Over the last, well, over the last half a day or so, I uh, noticed this uh, line of activity there, flat lining, indicating a very low solar weather activity. Uh, currently flaring, though, with a sea flare, but nothing big. C1.3, overall threat right now, 99% chance for a sea flare. And flare at 30, X flare around 1% or so. Uh, really not expecting much here. I was looking at these this morning throughout the day today. Uh, even these newer regions that are coming around the bend are looking quite, um, I don't know what the word is. They're not complex. They're relatively stable. Uh, and I'm uh, not seeing any type of growth or any type of, uh, um, you know, difference in terms of, uh, you know, what we could be looking for, for complexity uh, in the mag magnetic fields here. They don't look all that active. So we'll just uh, we'll have to roll with it. 
All these sunspots here, just uh, they're looking at us, but they are all stable, so no major solar flares are expected. Looks like there was a little, when was this put out? This is a very far side sunspot. Um, early this morning, it looks like. I did pop off a, uh, a little coronal mass ejection and uh, upper sea flare, but it may have been a little bit stronger because it was off of the uh, western limb there, so it may have been uh, an M flare. Either way, it did produce a nice CME, uh, halo CME there, it looks like. All right, Storm Prediction Center. Um, no severe storms. No, no severe storms. No severe storms. All right, numerical models here. Well, how's everyone doing out there with that colder weather? I've been watching a lot of uh, my friends on the social media sites there showing pictures of their uh, ice building up on their doors and on their windows and stuff. That's crazy cold, no doubt. But uh, it's not going to last for too much longer. Um, we got another band of... I did not mean to do that. Uh, another band here of colder weather. It's going to be scooting off there to the east with this... Uh, uh, pattern change. Watch the west coast here as we put this into motion. We're going to be looking at uh, several storms coming into the California area, bringing with it some warmer moisture, and um, it's going to keep that colder air well up north. So we got warmer storms coming in here from the south uh, and for the east coast as well, limiting uh, the snow potential out here. Um, and that looks, you know, it looks like it's going to last for a little while. After that, Uncertain though on what the uh, direct pattern change or the direct pattern is going to be uh, following that activity. I do know that we are looking at some decent uh, precipitation amounts out here from these storms that are coming in to the uh, California area. This is as far as it goes to about the end of the month. The south definitely getting in on quite a bit of rain, a lot actually of the east eastern uh, portion of the country. California definitely in there as well. Uh, maybe three to four and a half inches or so here around the Sacramento Valley. And this is, um, you know, combined uh, of all of these storms. Uh, but either way, this is good news. It's not all just hitting up here in the Pacific Northwest. It is uh, looking like we will get our share of rain here in California uh, coming up. And that is due to the jet stream out here. Let's check out the upper dynamics here. It's starting to take more of a linear fashion here aiming at the west coast you'll see when i put this in motion uh, over the past week or so this has kind of been a split flow one going way up north uh into the alaska area canada bringing down a lot of cold air behind it and one kind of split south here and re uh picking up here that's where all the south has been getting a lot of the rainfall so as we put this into motion you can see that kind of leveling out look at that beautiful linear fashion here that is what brings the storms into the west coast aiming right at southern california we're on the north side of that that's good that means rain for us and uh it looks like let's see what happens when we put it into motion here it wants to have another split type flow as we head towards the end of the month um you know it's common to see these little interruptions so to speak it's not always going to stay the same uh, but we'll see We'll see if that changes or not. Either way, short-term forecast here for the next week or so. Uh, look at some decent rain across the West Coast. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Um, have a good night. Again, uh, seismograph stations there look pretty calm, look pretty quiet. Uh, if you guys have any new information out there that you'd like to share, I've been seeing a lot of people commenting on the, uh, you know, the deal in Iceland up there. It's an unfortunate event, that is for sure. Um, but it's, you know, it's a hazard zone, like the West coast, California, we live out here, you know, along a plate boundary, anything can change in a moment's notice. The good thing is that they got, uh, the folks there from Greenavik evacuated. That is good news. Um, safety and priority, obviously, of the, uh, the folks out there. And I'm sure they're doing what they can to salvage and save the town of Greenavik. Um, we'll have more information tomorrow, folks, as more information becomes available. Uh, we'll wait for that. In the meantime, have a good night. Stay safe out there. And, of course, always got to be prepared, right? We live on an uh, ever-changing planet, and uh, uh, things are definitely changing, that's for sure. Have a good one.